Crawford Lake is one of the most unique lakes on Earth. It's about one hour southwest from Toronto. Set within Crawford Lake Conservation Area, this beautiful oasis is surrounded by forest and important indigenous archaeological sites. In stark contrast to its beautiful sparkling waters, below the surface, this lake holds a very powerful message about humanity's past, present, and our future. As I discuss the importance of Crawford Lake, I'm gonna show you a couple of different hiking routes that you can take to get to the site. You can drive right to Crawford Lake Conservation Area, but I definitely recommend hiking in. An international team of scientists that have studied Crawford Lake argue that the Earth moved into a new and irreversible era, starting in the 1950s. And the best piece of evidence in the entire world to support this can be found at the bottom of Crawford Lake. This team of scientists have proposed that the Earth has moved into a new epoch, the Anthropocene, although it's been rejected by some. One argument against is that the push to usher in the Anthropocene could be politically motivated. The message it sends to the world is certainly a provocative one. Others argue that we're still living through this event and it's too soon to make a call. Geologists, for example, who think about these things on a geologic timescale, think that the Great Acceleration may just be a blip on our planet's four billion year timeline. As it stands today, the new epoch is not official and a recent vote determined that we are not in fact in a new epoch. However, the the evidence is pretty clear. We've altered the planet in a major way, and how the scientific community defines this era of human impact on the Earth is yet to be determined. But if it's not a blip, and we don't recover, and humanity continues down this dangerous road of pollution, well, it could mark the beginning of our downfall. The importance of this lake and the information it holds cannot be overstated. Its layers of sediment carry evidence of asteroid hits, mass extinctions, toxic changes to the atmosphere, and continental ruptures. Yes, this information can be found elsewhere, but Crawford Lake's filing system, so to speak, is among the best anywhere on Earth. After the Second World War, when the Great Acceleration began, human activity started to overwhelm the planet's natural systems. Population and industry exploded, driven mostly by the burning of fossil fuels, which sent huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Plus, the introduction of plastics and the rise of nuclear weapons testing introduced additional materials and plutonium into the mix. And all of this obviously had a detrimental impact on the world. And all of this is clearly laid out year by year at the bottom of Crawford Lake. And that's all thanks to the lake's chemistry, which is among the rarest on Earth. There's a couple different things happening that account for this uniqueness. First, the lake is meromectic, which means the top layer of water never mixes with the bottom layer. Second, while most meromectic lakes have a bottom layer without oxygen, the water column at Crawford Lake is fully oxygenated, and scientists only know of a few places on Earth like it. As the sediment drifts down into the lower layer of water, it settles on the bottom and is cut off from the rest of the world. These layers are further sealed off by calcite deposits, which create distinct layers, and scientists can date the exact year of each one. For example, the Great Acceleration is clearly marked in these layers. Scientists can see a rapid and dramatic increase starting in the 19th 1950s of carbon-based particles showing up from industrial processes, coal-fired manufacturing from a local factory, a rapid rise in plutonium from nuclear testing, fertilizer use, and acid rain are just some of the evidence found in Crawford Lake. The evidence that scientists have collected from Crawford Lake effectively allows them to draw a line in the sand that says, on this side is the Holocene, an epoch that started in the Stone Age 12,000 years ago. Like an incubator, it marked a time of climate stability that allowed allowed humanity to prosper. And on this side, the Anthropocene, a time marked by volatility, instability, and extinction induced by humanity. This line in the sand marks a moment in time where humans have altered the earth so much that it won't recover. And we are now headed down this path towards, well, I don't know what. Perhaps these winter hikes will 
be a thing of the past. It's not all doom and gloom, however. There's still hope, and perhaps accepting this current state of affairs will allow us to move forward and will force creativity and ingenuity in the future. But how will humanity fare against these dramatic changes? Well, we're entering uncharted territory, so it's hard to say. But these changes to the planet are happening faster than we can evolve and adapt with them. So we need to make the right decisions today about how we interact with the planet tomorrow. And a great place to look for inspiration is just a few hundred meters away from Crawford Lake. The indigenous village here dates back 600 years and is a great example of how people lived with and respected nature. It was first discovered in the 1970s when scientists were doing tests at Crawford Lake. They found sediment at the bottom indicating that indigenous people had been farming corn, squash, and other vegetables nearby. This sparked an archaeological dig that uncovered over 10,000 artifacts and 11 longhouses. It's believed that 250 to 350 people lived on this site, but who inhabited this land exactly is still unclear. Experts believe it was ancestors of the Iroquois. There's guides here who can tell you about the village and what life was like 600 years ago before any Europeans showed up. It's a fascinating experience to walk inside a longhouse, smell the campfire, and get a sense of how life was lived hundreds of years ago. Today, we've altered the planet in some pretty bad ways. But the more we study the past and learn from our mistakes, the more informed our decisions will be for the future. This whole area offers natural beauty, great day hikes, and a chance to see part of Ontario that is rich with human and geologic history. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it interesting or informative. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. I don't always know where I'll be next, but I do know I'm gonna be out there exploring and I invite you to join me. Thanks, see you next time.